Hey everyone, Daniel here and welcome back to another video. I hope all of you are having a great day out there. As always, here today we need to talk about Voyager Digital, but more specifically dive in deep into six potential acquisition targets for the company over the next couple of months and years here that may fundamentally change the way Voyager operates as a company. As we know, around a week ago at this point, Voyager went out, they filed a base shelf prospectus that said, all right, we're ready to uh, potentially raise up to 300 million US dollars here over roughly the next two years and one of the main potential use cases for this money is an acquisition which is why I'm going to go through six potential companies or potential sectors in this video that at least I find interesting I did do a bit of a question poll on Twitter uh, some people did respond to, uh, to that Daniel Z finance by the way if you want to follow me on Twitter so anyways if you enjoy this video and find some value in it please consider subscribing and let's get into it so first and foremost here number one on the list I did put block Damon as we know this is a company that Voyager went ahead and partnered with, I believe a couple weeks ago, potentially a little over a month at this point, for cryptocurrency staking. As we know, Voyager, a majority of their interest, at least the interest that they give to consumers on pretty much a monthly basis at this point, comes from cryptocurrency lending. They lend it out to other financial institutions like Galaxy Digital uh, that are in need of liquidity, and they pay a pretty dang good interest rate on a monthly basis. Again, we're not going to go into those interest rates at this moment in time, but Voyager is currently focusing in on lending. But what they did is they partnered with Block Daemon, which is a company which facilitates cryptocurrency staking. Again, another form of earning interest on your cryptocurrencies besides uh, Bitcoin mining or cryptocurrency mining, there's crypto staking. I'm not going to go into staking in this video, but Block Daemon is pretty much the leader in this space. And this is the company that Voyager uh, partnered with to facilitate their crypto staking. And when we talk about the whole staking industry, it would not surprise me whatsoever for Voyager to potentially use some of those funds to maybe acquire a company involved in a similar space to Block Daemon so that they don't have to pay a potential fee on a monthly basis. As we know, Block Daemon facilitates the whole process, but in return for that, they do charge some form of commission. I mean, that's how they make money, right? But if Voyager ends up acquiring some form of a company that does something similar to Block Daemon, we may get rid of that potential fee and it's all done then in-house by Voyager, which is obviously a big positive. So, you know, number one on the list here, potentially staking. We'll see what happens with this moving forwards. But again, it would not surprise me to see some form of Block Daemon competitor to potentially be acquired by Voyager. Block Daemon, from my understanding, it is a multi-billion dollar company. So, you know, there's no way Voyager can acquire them for just, you know, 300 million US dollars. So uh, that's the first on the list here. Next, I have Big Digital. Now, I know I'm not talking about Big Digital as a company here. I know there are a lot of Big Digital, you know, people who love the stock, people who hate the stock and company. But talking about Big Digital, the company is too big for Voyager to acquire. Their fully diluted market, or sorry, fully diluted market cap sits right around 400 million or like $350 million at this moment in time. And even if Voyager wanted to acquire them, they'd most likely have to pay over market price. Uh, that's generally how acquisitions work. But you know, the reason I bring up big digital is because they're involved in the cryptocurrency security space, obviously, of uh, tracking down fraudulent activity within the system. And again, uh, I think a, maybe a better uh, kind of comparison with this is Chainalysis. This is another a larger company, maybe like the Block Daemon of the cryptocurrency security space. Again, involved in the crypto security space, uh, tracking down fraudulent activity within the blockchain. And uh, you know, when I talk about Voyager Digital here, this is a potential uh, you know kind of sector that they may or may not expand into here over the coming months. As we know, they are heavily involved in many different aspects of the crypto industry, and potentially expanding into cryptocurrency security, maybe something like a Chainalysis, maybe some something that Voyager ends up expanding into through some form of an acquisition. Again, when we talk about a potential acquisition here by Voyager, there's two different paths that they can go for. One, acquire a company that you know Voyager already participates in a certain sector, and they're going to acquire a company within, within that sector, which will kind of speed up the whole process of releasing that product or service. Or they can acquire a company that competes in an entirely different sector of the cryptocurrency or finance industry that Voyager didn't even plan on getting into. Potentially something like, uh, we'll go through this in a moment here, but maybe a crypto custodian or a crypto clearinghouse. I think that's the, the latter is the better example here. But again, change analysis at the end of the day, a company similar to this competing in the cryptocurrency security space 
it honestly would make sense for Voyager to potentially acquire a company involved in this space. But you know, what happens with that, we'll see. Uh, third on the list here, we have, oh, again, this, I'm just using an example here with Kraken, but Kraken Bank. This is a service that will come out eventually here on Kraken. I, again, in my opinion, I think Kraken is potentially one of Voyager's biggest competitors uh, just by the way the platform works and how easy it is to use, uh, similar to Voyager. But, you know, when we talk about Voyager potentially acquiring some form of a bank, this would really speed up the process of many different things and really allow Voyager to, you know, kind of speed up their goal and their mission of becoming a one in all finance lifestyle app, allowing you to do pretty much everything on the Voyager app. You know, who, who knows how much it would cost to potentially acquire some form of a bank, but is it a couple, you know, tens of millions of dollars, hundreds of millions of dollars, but in my opinion, with a budget of $300 million here at Voyager, I could see them potentially going out acquiring some form of bank or financial institution in that sense. And that will really help them speed up different things, such as potentially, again, expanding into, you know, different financial sectors, like getting paid through the Voyager app, or, you know, being able to use checks to deposit money in the Voyager app, or uh, a variety of other different things. I mean, the, there's an endless amount of possibilities here by potentially purchasing a bank that would really speed up the entire process, obviously making it entirely based off of the blockchain. I'm assuming that what that is what Voyager would do in this situation, but again, it would entirely make sense for Voyager to potentially acquire some form of a bank. Let me know what you think about this in the comment section down below, but I really think Voyager could acquire a bank for you know not too much money, and that would really help them speed up a variety of different things with maybe their credit card, debit card, lending, etc. But you know, in my opinion, a potential acquisition. We'll see what happens with this. Now, a fourth on the list here, crypto custodian, or you know, uh, as we know, Voyager, the way they hold their cryptocurrency is through multiple different custodians, uh, people who hold cryptocurrencies in a safe manner, I could definitely see Voyager going out, potentially purchasing a crypto custodian and holding those cryptocurrencies for themselves. Again, uh, reducing that middleman situation that, you know, again, re reduces fees, increases profitability and whatnot, and really does everything in house in this sense. So potentially acquiring some form of crypto custodian probably not too expensive, but at the same time would reduce a lot of the fees involved in this process. Again, under $300 million, that's a potential right there. Fifth on the list, Crypto Clearinghouse. Now this is, again, one of those more interesting things that, you know, again, would make Voyager a completely in-house brokerage and, you know, I guess exchange in this situation. As we know, Voyager partners with 13 different market makers or exchanges to facilitate their transactions. They pick the one with uh, the best price, go with them, and they facilitate the buy or sell of any crypto on their platform. But Voyager potentially going out and buying their own clearinghouse, again, would make everything in-house and reduce reliance on third parties, which is, again, what Voyager relies on currently. And, you know, again, it would kind of build a name for Voyager alongside that. As we know, a lot of these things, again, reducing the amount of third party activity at Voyager to do as much in-house as possible. Again, crypto clearinghouse, a lot of potential here to potentially compete with the likes of Coinbase or Binance, things along those lines. We'll see what happens with this moving forwards. But again, another potential scenario. Now, all of these five different scenarios here, although they are, you know, there is a potential Voyager may acquire these types of companies, I don't think it's strongly likely. In my opinion, the highest likelihood of a potential acquisition is simply Market Rebellion. And this is a company, again, Voyager acquired, with, uh, rather not acquired, but partnered with Market Rebellion a couple of months ago at this point to, uh, you know, begin the construction of their stock trading platform. Market Rebellion, obviously heavily involved in the stock and trading space. Space, uh, really focusing in on crypto trading and stock trading uh, kind of education through courses, one-on-one -on -one coaching, things along those lines. And Market Rebellion, this is the company, again, Voyager's partnering with them to create the stock trading side of their business through some different entity. And this different entity, partially owned by Voyager, partially owned by Market Rebellion, it honestly would make complete sense for Voyager to buy out Market Rebellion get the giant community of investors and traders that are behind the Market Rebellion platform, take control of this entity in full, have the skill set that the current Market Rebellion team has, and at the same time, again, do everything in-house and own this business fully. Now, talking about Market Rebellion, this is a business that Steve Ehrlich, the CEO of Voyager, has a very, very strong relationship with. When we talk about the founders of Market Rebellion, John and Pete Nigerian, Steve has a very, very strong relationship with 
the John. And again, this just makes complete sense in order to allow Voyager to continue improving their platform as a whole, optimizing it for traders, which again, uh, those are the most profitable company or rather uh, profitable users for Voyager, the ones that, you know, kind of trade all day, different cryptocurrency stocks once Voyager gets into them. But, you know, acquiring something like a market rebellion would allow Voyager to do everything in-house and own this entity in full. And in my opinion, that makes the most sense as market rebellion is not the largest company. I mean, uh, there isn't an exact market cap as to, you know, how large they are. But, you know, in my opinion, it wouldn't be more than a couple tens of millions of dollars, maybe upwards of a hundred million. But, you know, market rebellion, not the largest company in the world, but heavily involved in the stock trading space. And I think that would be very beneficial for Voyager from that perspective. So anyways, guys, let me know in the comment section down below what your thoughts are on these six different acquisitions, one for staking, one for crypto security, one potentially expanding their uh, exposure to the banking space, maybe uh, making Voyager a future bank, which is one of their plans. You have a crypto custodian, crypto clearinghouse, and then you have market rebellion as a, you know, kind of taking control of that full entity of Voyager stock trading. So anyways, guys, thank you all so much for watching this video. If you found some value in it, please consider subscribing. And again, let me know which acquisition you like the most or if I potentially even missed one. So anyways, thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.